In the last couple of weeks, I put out a day in the life video on how I get 10 to 20% response rates on pretty much all the emails that I send. I posted about it in the Facebook group and a bunch of you guys asked about how I set up my prompts. I've been in this whole cold email game for quite a while now, but similar to you, I'm just right at the beginning of figuring out how AI is gonna completely revolutionize outreach for all of us. And I think I might, just might have the answer to you getting 10% plus response rates in 2024. All right guys, well, without any further ado, I'll go ahead and put the main prompt here on the screen. Give you a couple seconds there to read it. Thank you guys so much for watching my YouTube video. We'll catch you guys next time. Don't forget to hit that. Um, I think we actually might be missing something. For this to make any sense, we have to start at the beginning and look at your custom data. If you've seen any of the other few videos I've recorded, you'd know I like to send emails in small segments, get ridiculously high open rates, and set up a clear process to close a good chunk of those positive responses. Call me crazy, but to me, it's just the simplest way to scale, especially if you're just starting out. Watching how most of you guys go about it in the Facebook group, it's all about volume, baby. I'd like to order 750,000 leads from Apollo today. $5, baby. I don't know, I'd much rather get 10 positive responses from 100 leads and close half of them, call it a day. Seriously, right? But I do have to say, with my strategy, you do have to get custom data from a Catalyst database, which again is a place where your prospect is active, posted on LinkedIn, showed up to a conference, um, made a, uh, an event, something like that. People that get selected to go speak at conferences or go on a podcast are generally awesome people. And I exclusively want to work with awesome people if I'm offering a service. So they did some of the heavy lifting for me. They're already pre-qualified. If you're a little bit like me and you don't really wanna do all the internet research to find all of these micro catalyst databases, well, I've been working on this custom GPT. You plug in some information, it'll use the internet feature, go out there, search and find exactly what I'm telling you to go find. Um, full transparency, this product is in beta, so it might not be perfect the first couple times around. I really like podcasts and live conferences as my Catalyst database, but almost everyone's target has posted something on LinkedIn or Twitter. So in this case, I'm gonna use has recently posted on LinkedIn. Once you found your Catalyst database, you'll wanna have your leads team go gather the data. We're starting to use clay.com for this as well, but I just can't fully recommend it yet. Nothing like those good old fashioned human hands going out there and making this happen. This next part is so simple, it might piss some of you guys off, but that's something I'm willing to live with. You'll go to extensions here and you'll go to add-ons, get extensions. If you don't already have, GPT for Sheets and Docs, you'll go here, install it, go into your OpenAI, grab your API key, install it back into Sheets. If that's too quick, go ahead and just look up tutorials for GPT for Sheets, you'll find one right away. When you're in the doc that you're going to use, go to extensions, GPT for Sheets, and make sure it's open and running. You should see this working thing down here and it should start doing its thing on the right-hand side. The first one I'm gonna do, for example, is going to be a list of podcasts that this person has done. So podcast description is what we're gonna be looking off of, and I'm gonna be doing a simple prompt here of just episode podcast. So equals GPT, and it starts with F2 is the prompt. We'll head back into GPT for Sheets. Go ahead and paste that in there. Now, what this F2 actually means is it's referencing a cell. So you go click backwards off that cell and I'm gonna be referencing the, uh, the description cell. In my case, it happens to be J2 and I'm gonna go ahead and click enter. What it should do is create something that we would actually wanna summarize. So, you know, in a sentence it might say, I loved your episode on how, you know, we would actually put on and then it would say how uh, Maximized is developing a shock absorber that can stabilize um, an injured knee. Pretty simple stuff there. So what this is actually creating is the end of a sentence that we would use in a cold outreach. So it might say, I loved your episode on how Maximize is developing a shock absorber that can stabilize an injured knee. Pretty simple. What you'll do once you have this and, and it sounds good to you, you like it, you'll just go ahead and drag this all the way down for as many of them as you have. Maybe you have hundreds, maybe you only have 50, something like that. I'll drag it down and it'll just start saying loading. Okay, so this data is looking pretty good. It follows the same sort of structure on how Michael Matson explains his thoughts behind possible J&J &J acquisition on how, how, how Boston Scientific, da, da, da. 
and it always ends all of them with a period, which means that we could literally just toss this into a sequence, which is the next thing that we'll do. I know a lot of us are gonna be using LinkedIn, so real quick here, I will be using the LinkedIn post example as well. It's the exact same thing though. You go ahead and reference the cell, LinkedIn post, create a description for this LinkedIn post, and um, it'll generate a prompt here, which should look the exact same. The next big thing is you gotta build a script around it so that it makes sense for each prospect that we're reaching out to. And uh, lucky for you, I've got another tool in beta that you can use that'll bring all this nice data to the forefront of the script. But again, it's in beta. You'll go ahead and fill this out step-by-step -step on your screen here, answering all the questions about your micro segment, giving it some context. Shortly later, you'll get an email that looks like this. You can hop in and actually look at how the segment works. So you've got all the information about your micro segment, all the information about the custom data point summarized, and of course, something that looks like this. Hey, John and team, yesterday I listened to your talk from the Social Summit on making better life decisions in 2024. This is an example of how the data gets summarized. It'll get put it in these little brackets. So then you know, when you go to map this out in your sending tool, that that's going to work for all of these. And it's going to, this script will kind of put together a narrative here on how we know this kind of stuff already converts. And if you read this copy, it'll sound kind of similar with the context that's, that it's given. Um, it was different from what I'd heard anywhere else. I wanted to reach out because I've developed an AI tool called Brightspot. It takes all your recent podcast journals, notes, et cetera, and turns them into teachable frameworks to better distribute your unique thoughts. Kind of sounds like a cool idea. I don't know if anybody's into AI development, but that, that, that wouldn't be bad. I've been blessed to work with seven of the biggest coaches out there, including Tony Robbins as beta testers to organize their podcast riffs into impactful teaching. Mind if I share a quick video about, uh, about this with your team sent from Reese. So this is sort of as simple as this needs to be. Again, this is all the AI you actually need. The rest of this is just a really good email template in my opinion. I know that if we were to send this out, I bet we would get, I would say probably a 15% response rate, even with really high end clients that are up there speaking on stages, doing really cool stuff. You know, maybe you have some follow-ups in here, just kind of bumping this. Um, doing some different stuff, but this is all AI written um, with the magic sequence builder. There's just this enormous amount of stuff that we can do with this, like custom pain points based on their company description that we think we, they might be having, or a custom call to action. But for now, using this exact technique that I just gave you, I'm seeing a 17, a 15, a 12% response rate on different campaigns that I'm running in the heart of December, which is traditionally you know, a colder time when it comes to B2B sales. So I'm learning this stuff just as fast as I can. I've got so many exciting things that I wanna share with you. And I just wanna say thanks for your attention. I appreciate you being here and we'll see you next time.